Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous. It keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Reverend Dr. David Binden on the Good Life Devotion brought to you by the Mega Lights Mission, the church for this generation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a joy once again to carry away on your favorite good life devotion. Of course, this is your center for biblically authoritative teachings. It has been amazing this week as we started looking at the subject of remaining steadfast in Christ by being fully persuaded on certain basic things in Christ. It has become clear to us that to be born again is very important. But if you don't learn to remain steadfast in Christ, you can be moved a lot of physical circumstances from financial, marital, health, educational, many things have swept people off their feet out of Christ. And some people have gone so out of Christ that they are amazed at themselves. They wonder, am I this person? And they wonder, how did I come this far out of Christ? It's because they were not steadfast. And what made them not steadfast? They were not fully persuaded on certain basic things in our faith in Christ. So we started showing you some of them. The first is to know the overall purpose of God for mankind. That God never created mankind to forever remain as mankind. Angels will forever remain as angels. That's why they were not created in the image of God. Plants will remain like that. Animals like that. Other beings like that. But humans were never made to remain as humans. That's why they were made in the image and in the likeness of God. And the scripture tells us that the reason is because God preordained that in these human spirits will he pour his divine life to make them the very sons and daughters of God. This is God's ultimate plan. And this is what the coming of Jesus came to achieve. When I had to look at the Father, you need to become fully persuaded about the Father that being in Christ is through the new birth as compared to the human birth, the birth of the spirit. And that produces a new creature with a, it, who is a partaker of the divine nature. A new creature with a divine nature. You need to be fully persuaded that you are of the divine nature. If you need more on this, never miss our new creation conferences. The one coming on this year in November at the National Theater, you can't miss it. The one I had to learn that you also need to be fully persuaded about God's eternal purpose for your life. God didn't do all these investments to leave, to leave you on the earth to just figure out what to do by your own. He invested in you because he has a purpose for your life. The first is to get you to become his adopted child. And once you, he gets you to that place, he, you become his instrument now in getting others to become like that. By whichever means that he leaves you. So don't live your life just following and chasing after the wind as the world does. You should live for a purpose which was determined for you long before you were born. It is from this place that we are rounding up today. I'm telling you, be fully persuaded. Be fully persuaded. The question is, how can someone get fully persuaded? That's what I'm going to take you on today as we round up on this subject. But let's share in a word of prayer. Daddy, we love you. We give you all the praise and the glory. We magnify you for making us mighty successes on this earth and in eternity. Establishing us beyond being removed out of Christ. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. So our topic is how to become fully persuaded. How to become fully persuaded. Again, we are going to use that scripture. Like I said, what we are learning is much more than that. But 
because of the fully persuaded aspect of it, we go to Romans 14, verse 5. It says, one man estimate one day above another, another estimate every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So you ought to get to a place in Christ where you are fully persuaded concerning certain basic facts. It is a full persuasion on some of these basic facts which I've shared with you in our previous episodes. That will keep you in Christ no matter which financial wind blows, no matter which uh, health winds blow, no matter which social winds blow, or whatever comes. As long as we are on this planet that is yet to be removed, never think that there are not going to be winds. But if you are born again, you were born again as a master over all the wings. He says, whatsoever is born of God has overcome the world. So why should a child of God be swept by the wind? He says, if you fail in the day of adversity, it means your strength is small. In other words, the adversity shouldn't have made you fail. But you were not well rooted. You were not stranded. You were not firm. But these words that I'm sharing with you are making you firm. They are making you strengthened. They are making you established. You will never be moved out of Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So how can you become fully persuaded? For instance, you want to become fully persuaded about God's eternal plan. How can you? You want to become fully persuaded about your divine health. How can you? You want to become fully persuaded about your purpose. How can you? Because people kind of have some level of belief. But it is when things hit them hard beyond what they ever imagined, then they begin to shake and they lose everything. So they thought they believed until circumstances revealed their true nature. Like I said, maybe a young person who grew up, got born again early, was so passionate for Christ, was preaching to his colleagues, they even called him pastor, he grew up, then maybe terrible things started happening around him. Parents died, things happened. Maybe didn't get a job that he expected, couldn't get educated as he thought. Everything seemed to be hitting hard at him. And to extend that even what to eat becomes a challenge. Then he starts contemplating, where is the love of God? Why did God treat me this, one, this much? He started joining Sakawa and all that. But earlier in his life, he thought he believed. But was he really convinced that God is his father? Did he, was he fully persuaded that if there was even no physical father, he had a, a father who truly gave that to him? No. So how can you become fully persuaded? I'm going to share with you three simple steps. But before then, let me read what we have. We said that we have shared this week the need to be fully persuaded about some facts of our relationship in Christ. In this era, where there are many things that are seeking the attention of the Christian, how does one become fully persuaded? Because the world, the 21st century, has become so a very busy century. And uh, permissiveness has crept in into the world, into the, 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 the church. And now, the church that the Bible told them what to do. Today, people want to tell the Bible how it should be written. And people think that because postmodernism has come, the Bible should be altered to become postmodern. But they've forgotten that God is the most postmodern person and yet the most ancient person. God is not going to change because of your little postmodernism. He knew postmodernism long before it came. And so Christians are under pressure to try to conform, and a lot of them are working hard to balance. So even the way church is done today is a balance. Or oh, your church must have what the, the, the branding. There must be branding in church. So a lot of things in church is being done to meet societal standards. Entrepreneurship standards have come into church. Now you can never have a pastor's conference that will end without people teaching people certain things that are purely entrepreneurship without the Holy Ghost. So the church is busy. Now many Church groups are, are running based on purely business standards. And 
they are growing not because the Holy Ghost is there or not because the Bible is being taught, but because they are using principles of business growth. For instance, a bank does not necessarily need uh, God to grow or just need to stick to banking principles. You can import that into a, to a group of two, three people and call yourself a church and it can grow by just manage, managerial skills without the Holy Ghost. Because several things are craving the attention of the Christian. And many Christians have been bought by several things. In the midst of all these competitions, how can one be fully persuaded to the extent that nothing moves him? How can you use social media and not be misled by social media? Very powerful too. That a lot of Christians have become impure in their thoughts. A lot of Christians have imported a lot of fear into them by just what they read and see and watch on social media. How can you remain still fully persuaded? Today, a lot of young people are finding it very difficult to just maintain the purity of mind and heart. Why? Because of social media. Not even only social, now even the digital, the static media, everything. Education, everything. And now education is becoming even the way people want. Sometimes I hear that some schools that is the students who decide how the, the school should run. You can't even correct a child and the teacher will be punished. <laughs> then who is teaching who? The society is becoming totally demonic without systems, without principles. But in the midst of this, the sons of God. Bible says that in a crooked and perverse world, we are to shine as lights. That means that God knows that no matter what happens, we, the sons of God, we will stand as light and maintain the standard. But this will only happen when the sons of God become fully persuaded. How can a young guy be in a senior high among friends who are corrupt and choose to remain true? I remember in cases when People had to buy examination papers and everybody's looking for a point here and there. How can a student remain focused on his studies and not be looking for these things? You need to be fully persuaded. In a world where immorality is just everywhere you turn left and right, from people's dressing to billboards to television screens to phone screens everywhere, how do you keep your mind and your heart sanctified? by becoming fully persuaded. In a generation where biblical principles are no more the standard, there are people in the name of Christian going about preaching that uh, if you're a young man and you don't know a lady and you marry, you've not explored enough. And Christians are busy attending such conferences. When their own Bible tells them that whether in marriage or not in marriage, God will judge homongers. How do you maintain the standards when all your friends make you look like you are the only one that is not having fun? You, don't, you are not showing fun. You are not, in, you are not in the class. But in the midst of all this, by the Holy Ghost, the sons and daughters of God are standing. How do we do that? By full persuasion. I want to share with you three simple steps how you can become fully persuaded in some of these things. Number one is do a personal assessment. Do a personal assessment of yourself. The reason why many people are swept off their feet is that they never know who they really are themselves. And if you don't know who you are yourself, then who can know who you are except God? 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says that. It says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. It says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. As a child of God, you need to really know who you are. Examine yourself. Ask yourself some basic questions. That's the first step of full persuasion. Because if you don't pin yourself to the corner, you wouldn't really, really know whether you really believed or not. And I'm telling you things from scripture and from personal experience. There are sometimes that I thought I believed something. And when I began asking myself hard questions in that area, I realized that mm, I didn't really believe. So I have to now go and study again. 
Honestly, there were times in my life I thought, oh, I thought I knew much about divine health. Until a sickness struck. And I thought I felt I was struggling with it. I said, ah, no. Then I re-examined my belief in divine health. Then I go and study. It kept on until stability. So if you don't examine yourself, you might be deceived into thinking you are standing. Some Christians never think they could lie. Until one situation, they are caught in the trap. Then they are now, their words are shaky. You don't know what they are saying. Therefore, they have lied severally. And when you lie once, you have to keep on lying. And make a mess of their own lives. Why? They never examine themselves to see, what is my basis for speaking truth? So if you want to be fully persuaded in the Christian faith, do a personal examination. Ask yourself a question. What are some of them? Ask yourself these questions, some searching questions. question is, what do I really believe? So take these areas. What do I really believe that being born again is? What is my personal belief about being born again? What do I really believe about these things about divine nature? Do I still think I'm a human and then maybe as I do right, I may operate like God? You alone, just then ask yourself questions. What, is, what do I believe about living right? What do I believe about immorality? Do I think that sometimes it can be permitted? You know, a lady came one time and said, I was very young when my father left my mom. And then when I grew, my mom doesn't have a house, so she just left me and I had to find for myself. So I just went and this guy gave me a room and I stayed. So the person thinks that it's a, it's a good reason to compromise on morality. No. God is aware of all that is happening. So do you really believe? So what do I really believe? Do I really believe there is heaven and there is hell? Do I really believe Jesus is coming soon? What do I really believe? And then, what am I really persuaded about? Sometimes you believe a lot of things, but there are those that you are really persuaded. To be persuaded means that you have believed the thing to the extent that there's nothing that can change your mind. You cannot doubt it. Ask yourself these questions. Then, you can ask yourself, to what extent have I been fully persuaded about the fact that I am God since I became born again? Do I really think I'm a new creature? Am I fully convinced? Am I persuaded? Do I really think I can live a life without sin? Do I really think I'm victorious over the devil? You know, a lot of Christians say, oh, the devil is defeated. Then they sing so, yet I bone some so, yet I bone some so. And sing a lot of songs, jumping that they are victorious with the devil. Until somebody tells them, I see you in a bottle. And you may die in the next three days. Then they begin to shake and run up and down. The very devil that they said they were jumping on him. Did they really believe that being in Christ, they are masters of the devil? You see, so you need to ask yourself. That's the first step to becoming fully persuaded. Examine yourself. Then number two is, when you realize that in an area you're not fully persuaded, what do you do? Build your conviction by hearing more of God's word in that area. Hear more of God's word. And when I mean God's word, today there are many things that people carry about calling God's word, which is not God's word. You need to get the truth. That something is having a few scriptures in it. Doesn't mean that it's God. I've seen a lot of books in Christian shops. You won't see one scripture. But the senses are all Christianized. Sometimes they'll throw one scripture here, and then the whole thing is just senses. And you get, oh, it's a powerful book on how to say, yes, I do. And everything is just physical experiences, nothing scriptural. Powerful book. Even on healing or Holy Spirit or something, and there's nothing real biblical about it. So you need to actually even know what to So you go to the Bible. And that is why we keep on saying that a trusted source of teaching like this should not be kept to you. People need it to know the truth. So hear more of God's word. Romans 10, 17. It says, faith coming by hearing. Faith simply means conviction in the evidence of God's word. So the more you hear, that's why if you're at a place, why they don't think the truth? What are you hearing? If you're at a place where they say the devil can bind you, you will be bound. 
Because what you hear can never generate conviction in you enough to stand against the devil. If you are at a place where sicknesses are permitted, you will definitely be one of them. So it matters where you flock. Be at a place where you can consistently hear what can build your conviction in the scriptures. If you go to a place where the, what you hear are sermons of human experiences, your life will be totally humanistic. That's why we say, make sure you are planted in a Bible teaching church. If you hear the Bible rightly divided, it will build your conviction. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word. It is a hearing by human experiences. Hearing by the word. It must be right division of the word. So number one, examine yourself. Number two, hear more of the word. Receive more of the word. Read more of the word. The more you interact with the word of God, the more your convictions are built. Imagine you go back and download all the videos for this week and you keep on listening. I'm a partake of your divine nature. I'm really born again. I'm begotten. As you listen and make, you, you, this things will begin to dawn on you. Sometimes you listen to a message and you thought you got it. But if you listen to it two, two times or thrice or more, the more you listen, the better you become at understanding it. We go for a new Christian conference and people tell the God, the next day we, the next year we come and there's much more and we are better off. That's because so I came for a new Christian conference last year. I'm not coming. No, you must come every year till Jesus comes. Because the more you come, the more enlightened you become. And the more your convictions are built. Any Christian who throws away his Bible has thrown away his convictions. And when I say throw away your Bible, I'm not saying that you physically throw it away, but you are not opening it. You are not reading it. The only time you open it is when there's an argument and you want to check what to also go and say. That's not how. The Bible is your textbook of life. There are school of medicine, schools of medicine for medical doctors, nursing for nurses, and other schools. What is the school of life? The school of life is the Bible. That's a textbook of life. Then the third step to make you become fully persuaded is that as you hear the word, begin to embrace the word and start making confessions. Embrace the word. Embrace it and be meditated. Meditate on the word. Receive the word into you and start making confessions. Declare the word. Be bold about who you are among your colleagues. Declare your righteousness. Declare your victory. Declare your staunchness in Christ. When others are trying to be what they call nice, nice, be bold and declare your, your, your solidity in Christ. People don't like you when you're like that. But which is better? To be lukewarm and be swept off your feet and to be staunch and people not liking you and standing to Christ, which is better? Listen, today, many people are not going through my things. In the early part of the church, people were tied to poles and bent alive for their faith. So this most more things that we go through at work, among family members that we are not even, we don't want to even talk so that they will call us pastor and we are just jokers. How about those that stood amongst many people in front of uh, kings and, and, and religious leaders and still declared that, affirmed their faith in Christ and died for it? How about those ones? You love life more than them? But also that you have not resisted even to the shedding of blood. So let's be bold. Let's embrace the truth. And let's not just keep them inside. Let's meditate on them and make confessions. As you declare out of your heart, it produces results. Listen, your heart, when Jesus was talking about the sower who went to sow, he said, he described their heart as the ground on which they sowed. You got it? Now, if your heart is the land, what happens to a land that nothing is sowed? It is not a bare land. Any land that nothing is so the devil will sow tears, he will sow grass, weeds will grow. So don't wait for the devil to sow weeds in your life. Sow your own seeds. Your confessions are the seed. Plant something into your life. 
If you see a land and apples are growing, they didn't just grow. Someone planted it. If you don't plant anything, weeds will grow. So plant divine heaven into your life. Plant glory into your life. Plant progress into your life. Plant victory into your life. How? By speaking. By speaking what you believe. If so, God knows I believe. No. Your life is a whole field. Plant good seeds. These are the truth of God's words. Don't plant fear. Don't plant evil. Don't plant doubt. Don't plant anxiety. Plant confidence, the truth of God's word. By what you meditate and confess. If you will examine your life by asking what you really believe in certain areas. And if you realize that you have found wanting, you give yourself to hear it more along those lines and begin to embrace, meditate, and confess. You get to a place where you are fully persuaded, just so persuaded that there is nothing on the earth that can move you out. These are simple ways to become fully persuaded on any subject in the Bible. I believe this has been a great week. You have watched me right now. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That with all we have learned, you are becoming fully persuaded in major areas of your life, according to scripture. And you'll be so established in Christ that you are immovable. If you watch me, I've not yet received Christ. It is easy. Believe with all your heart that God is cast from the dead. And declare him as Lord. And you will receive the life of God in your spirit and become born again. Say this after me if you want to do that. Say, dear Lord Jesus, with my heart I believe that you made eternal life available by your resurrection from the dead. I receive that life into my spirit by declaring you as Lord of my life. Hallelujah. I've done that. You are born again. Make sure you contact us and help you to grow. If you are born again over this week, do contact us. We have a virtual church you can join if you are far away. Or you can come to our on-site church and we'll fellowship with you. But if not, look for a Bible teaching church. Don't sit in the house and be misled. Till I come your way again in our next episode. Life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for watching the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan, brought to you by the Megalite Mission. To fellowship with any of our branches near you, call 055-792-7744. Follow Dr. David Bindan on Facebook by simply liking the Good Life Devotion page and the David Bindan Life page and receive daily nuggets to enable you exhibit God's divine life in you. Also watch previous episodes of the Good Life Devotion on YouTube on the Dr. David Bendan channel and you will be blessed. Visit our website today and have access to life transforming teachings and materials by Dr. David Bendan and Mrs. Cindy Bendan. Your life will never be the same. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.